The Holy Science by Swami Sri Yukteswargiri. The purpose of this book is to show as clearly as possible that there is an essential unity in all religions, that there is no difference in the truths inculcated by the various faiths, that there is but one method by which the world, both external and internal, has evolved, and that there is but one goal admitted by all scriptures. But this basic truth is not one easily comprehended. The discord existing between the different religions and the ignorance of men make it almost impossible to lift the veil and have a look at this grand verity. The creeds foster a spirit of hostility and dissension. Ignorance widens the gulf that separates one creed from another. Only a few specially gifted persons can rise superior to the influence of their professed creeds and find absolute unanimity in the truths propagated by all great faiths. The object of this book is to point out the harmony underlying the various religions and to help in binding them together. This task is indeed a Herculean one, but at Allahabad I was entrusted with the mission by a holy command. Allahabad, the sacred Prayaj Tirtha, the place of confluence of the Ganges, Jumna and Saraswati rivers, is a site for the congregation of worldly men and of spiritual devotees at the time of Kumbha Mela. Worldly men cannot transcend the mundane limit in which they have confined themselves, nor can spiritual devotees, having once renounced the world, deign to come down and mix themselves in its turmoil. Yet men, who are wholly engrossed in earthly concerns, stand in infinite need of help and guidance from those holy beings who bring light to the race. So a place there must be where union between the two sets is possible. Tirtha affords such a meeting place. Situated as it is on the beach of the world, storms and buffets touch it not. The sadhus, with a message for the benefit of humanity, find a kumbha mela to be an ideal place to impart instruction to those who can heed it. A message of such a nature I was chosen to propagate when I paid a visit to the kumbha mela being held at Allahabad in January 1894. As I was walking along the bank of the Ganges, I was summoned by a man and was afterwards honored by an interview with a great holy person, Babaji, the Guru Deva of my own Guru, Lahiri Mahasaya of Banaras. This holy personage at the Kumbha Mela was thus my own Param Guruji Maharaj, though this was our first meeting. During my conversation with Babaji, we spoke of the particular classes of men who now frequent these places of pilgrimage. I humbly suggested that there were men greater by far in intelligence than those then present, men who were living in distant parts of the world, Europe and America, professing different creeds and ignorant of the real significance of the Kumbha Mela. They were men fit to hold communion with the spiritual devotees, so far as their intelligence is concerned, yet such intellectual men in foreign lands were, alas, wedded, in many cases, to rank materialism. Some of them, though famous for their investigations in the realms of science and philosophy, do not recognize the essential unity in religion. The professed creeds serve as nearly insurmountable barriers that threaten to separate mankind forever. My Param Guruji Maharaj, Babaji, smiled and honoring me with the title of Swami, imposed on me the task of this book. I was chosen, I do not know the reason why, to remove the barrier and to help in establishing the basic truth in all religions. The book is divided into four sections, according to the four stages in the development of knowledge. The highest aim of religion is atmajyanam, self-knowledge, but to attain this, knowledge of the external world is necessary. Therefore, the first section of the book deals with the gospel, and seeks to establish the fundamental truth of creation, and to describe the evolution and the involution of the world. All creatures, from the highest to the lowest in the link of creation, are found eager to realize three things, existence, consciousness, and bliss. This, the purpose or goal of all creatures, is the subject for discussion in the second section of the book. The third section deals with the method of realizing the three purposes of life. The fourth section discusses the revelations which come to those who have traveled far to realize the three ideals of life and are very near their destination. The method I have adopted in the book is first to enunciate a proposition in Sanskrit terms of the Oriental sages, and then to explain it by reference to the holy scriptures of the West. In this way I have tried my best to show that there is no real discrepancy, much less any real conflict, between the teachings of the East and the West. 
written as the book is under the inspiration of my Param Guru Deva and in a Dwapara age of rapid development in all departments of knowledge, I hope that the significance of the book will not be missed by those for whom it is meant. A short discussion with mathematical calculation of the yugas is necessary here in order to explain the fact that the present age for the world is Dwapara Yuga, and that 194 years of that yuga have now, in A.D. 1894, passed away, bringing a rapid development in man's knowledge. We learn from Oriental astronomy that moons revolve around their planets, and planets turning on their axis revolve with their moons around the sun, and the sun again, with its planets and their moons, takes some star for its duel and revolves round it in about 24,000 years of our Earth a celestial phenomenon which causes the backward movement of the equinoctial points around the zodiac. The sun also has another motion by which it revolves around a grand center called Bishnu Navi, which is the seat of the creative power Brahma, the universal magnetism. Brahma regulates Dharma, the mental virtues of the internal world. When the sun in its revolution around its duel comes to the place nearest to this grand center, the seat of Brahma, an event which takes place when the autumnal equinox comes to the first point of Aries. Dharma, the mental virtue, becomes so much developed that man can easily comprehend all, even the mysteries of spirit. After 12,000 years, when the sun goes to the place in its orbit which is farthest from Brahma, the grand center, an event which takes place when the autumnal equinox is on the first point of Libra, Dharma, the mental virtue, comes to such a reduced state that man cannot grasp anything beyond the gross material creation. Again, in the same manner, when the sun in its course of revolution begins to advance towards the place nearest to the grand center, Dharma, the mental virtue, begins to develop. This growth is gradually completed in another 12,000 years. Each of these periods of 12,000 years brings about a complete change in the system, both externally in the material world and internally in the intellectual or electric world, and is called one of the Daiba Yugas, or electric couple. Thus, in a period of 24,000 years, the sun completes the revolution around its duel and finishes one electric cycle consisting of 12,000 years in an ascending arc and 12,000 years in a descending arc. Development of Dharma, the mental virtue, is but gradual and is divided into four different stages in a period of 12,000 years. The time of 1,200 years during which the sun passes through one twentieth portion of its orbit is called Kali Yuga. Dharma, the mental virtue, is then in its first stage and is only a quarter developed. The human intellect cannot comprehend anything beyond the gross material of this ever-changing creation, the external world. The period of 2400 years during which the sun passes through the second 20th portion of its orbit is called Dwapara Yuga. Dharma, the mental virtue, is then in the second stage of its development and is but half complete. The human intellect can then comprehend the fine matters or electricities and their attributes which are the creating principles of this external world. The period of 3600 years during which the sun passes through the third twentieth part of its orbit is called Treta Yuga. Dharma, the mental virtue, is then in the third stage. The human intellect becomes able to comprehend the divine magnetism, the source of all electrical forces on which the creation depends for its existence. The period of 3600 years during which the sun passes through the third twentieth part of its orbit is called Treta